Now this is something you won't find in every city. You know, you won't find a bag bikes galore in Phoenix. along the Royal Mile can't help but notice that this street isn't just about buying Scottish products. The conflicts that have existed among the residents of the Royal Mile are reflected further up High Street at the John Knox House. This building was formally owned and restored in 1556 by James Mossman, the Royal Goldsmith to Mary Queen of Scots. The Mossman family had a long-standing connection to the Royal Stuart Court. At that time, the Protestant Reformation was sweeping Europe and Edinburgh, dividing the nation between Catholics like Mary and the Protestants who were led by the feisty Scottish Reformation preacher John Knox. James Mossman was a supporter of the Catholic faith and the Queen. The Mossmans lost their fortune, their house, their position in society and their royal office because of their support of Mary Queen of Scots. She basically was on the losing side. Mossman was considered a traitor by the winners, who after assassinating Mossman moved John Knox into this highly symbolic residence. At the heart, the Scottish idea of democracy is our friend John Knox. We can't get around this because uh, the whole Reformation thing was about respect of individuality and individual knowledge and individual choice, you see. Now, when Knox clashed with Mary Queen of Scots and people like uh, James Mossman, one of the big issues was on royal authority. You see, Mary believed that God appointed the king or queen to rule over the people, right? But the Scottish tradition was that sovereignty came from the people. It was the will of the people that enabled somebody to be king or queen. And if that king or queen let you down, then it was your right, maybe your responsibility to get rid of them and put somebody else in their place who was going to do a better job. Now that was political dynamite. Knox and his reformers won. And this house has stood overhanging the Royal Mile through the centuries as a reminder of history. Although there was a time in the 1800s that urban renewal threatened this landmark. The town council wanted to demolish the structure to widen the road, but public protest arose because the people saw John Knox as a hero for the Scottish working man. And this building as the embodiment of the social and cultural history of the last 600 years. It, it could be a small alley uh, leading up to either shops, but there are not so many shops now, but in old times, like like this, this is a great example, new assembly close. And, I mean, we're walking up here and uh, when you eventually come out, you see a delightful little Georgian mansion. Oh, yeah. Isn't this delightful? This is beautiful. Yeah, this is, this is uh, it's so surprising. I mean, you would think a house like this would have a large garden of ground. Right. But I don't think it ever did have. I haven't done enough research into this particular building. But there was probably a garden at the back going down, maybe yeah. to a, maybe a sort of orchard or something. This is one of the things I love about the Royal Mile is the discovery. And for scholars, discovery means a trip to the National Library of Scotland. Amy Lou Harris. Hello, Dr. Brown. How nice to welcome you to Edinburgh, to oh. the National Library of Scotland, one of the great libraries of the world. Great. What we're going to do is take you into the strong rooms and let you see some of our great literary treasures. That's fantastic. Marvellous manuscripts, Burns, Scott, Carlyle, things like that. So you yeah, like that? I'm not going to find the, the latest bestseller and be able to check it out, right? Well, you'll find some of these <laughs> things, but don't try and take them away, otherwise you'll be arrested. <laughs> The library has more than seven million books in its vaults.
Among the treasures is a cartoon depicting the 18th century writer Samuel Johnson and his biographer Boswell. In 1773, yeah. on their way to the Hebrides, Boswell and Johnson met in Edinburgh and there was a famous episode when they walked up the high street and the caption is taken from Boswell's journal. Mr. Johnson and I walked arm in arm up the high street to my house in James Court. It was a dusky night. I could not prevent his being assailed by the evening effluvia of Edinburgh. As we marched along, he grumbled in my ear, I smell you in the dark. <laughs> That's wonderful. I guess it was a smelly town. Now, come and see one of our larger collections. The Minto papers begin down there in blue. They run all the way up here. They run all the way down this wall. They run all the way down this wall. They come all the way up here. They go all the way up there. They go all the way down here. They go all the way down here. And they end up down there with the blue volumes. One single family collection. Being with Dr. Brown is like going through an archaeological dig with Indiana Jones. All these papers, political and personal, belong to a governor general in India. And here's a splendid tiger shoot in progress. That's People beautiful. crossing a river. I mean, and these are powder. really beautiful. These animals. are wonderful things. These vaults hold an impressive array of historic knowledge with over a million maps and over 100,000 manuscripts, including many of Sir Walter Scott, a world famous poet, patriot, and lawyer. Well, obviously, this is not the first draft. I mean, yes, he didn't have a first draft. This, this, mean, this is, is, this is, this is exactly came, as it came out of like his head, Mozart. onto, yeah, onto the like paper. The, like yeah, the notes yeah. of Mozart. Yeah. From being the most famous poet in Europe, mm -hmm. Scott suddenly, in 1814, emerged as a novelist of tremendous power with Waverley, which really? manuscript we have. But this is the manuscript of a slightly later novel, The Heart of Midlothian, which was published in uh, 1818. And I've chosen it because the title relates to that famous spot in the Royal Mile, where the heart in the paving marks out the site of the former hated city jail, the Tolbooth. The Heart of Midlothian may not be Scott's most remembered novel, but there is an actual stone heart still on the site of the old gallows. The heart of Midlothian. It seems as though people spit on it. They aren't spitting on Scotland, but rather the English who placed the gallows here. Although England and Scotland now are united, the past battles still echo in history. It seems part of the national character to keep history alive and relevant. Symbols have real power for the Scottish people, and the most potent symbol of the intense history between England and Scotland is the Stone of Schoon, the Stone of Destiny, 